Welcome to the world of FM synthesis, a completely new ball game from what we've been dealing with before. For this example, I want to take a look at FM8, which is a really nice uh, emulation of the classic DX series from Yamaha, as well as adding a bunch of new features and new ideas that weren't available on the, the DX series, most notably the DX7. Now, the sound that we're looking at here in Sound Design 5.1 is a basic sawtooth wave. Now, that's not the most exciting sound, I will agree. And the intention of this sound design is not to necessarily uh, help you learn how to make a sawtooth wave, but it's to wrap your brain a little bit around what happens when you introduce modulators to carriers and some Two, two very basic functions and what their result is. So uh, we're going we're gonna to make kind of a sawtooth wave, though we'll be lis li missing a lot of the high frequency content, as is mentioned in the sound design in Chapter 5. So the first thing I want to do, if you happen to be using FM8, you'll notice that it usually comes up with the browser mode in view. And I'm going to come down here to show the operators. Down the left side, we'll see the first six oscillators that we can manipulate. We're only going to need two oscillators for uh, for this sound. F is the starting point. That's the kind of default starting point in FM8. And what we're going to do is grab the next door neighbor here, E, and we're going to activate it to be a modulator on top of F's carrier. So right now, I'm going to come over to E, and here's a tricky part about FM8. If you click on it, it does zoom up and it looks like everything's working normally. The problem is to actually activate it, what you need to do is right click if your mouse has that functionality or control click on the Mac to uh, activate so that the letter E turns to white uh, as opposed to these that are turned off that are in black. Next thing we need to do to introduce the output of E as a modulator into carrier F, I need to position the mouse in this gray box right here, click and hold, and drag it up. So let me bring it back down for a second. I'm going to play the sine wave on its own. And then while I'm holding that down, I'm going to bring up, click and hold, and bring up the amount of modulation coming in here. Right. You'll notice up here in the top portion of the window, there is a, a immediate spectrum analysis of what you're producing that can be very useful. Now, none of that sounded like a, a, the type of sawtooth that we would normally hear in subtractive synthesis from an oscillator. But it's, it's starting out by uh, giving us every overtone uh, at, at a sort of a linear descent, which is similar to a sawtooth. We're just missing the higher frequencies. As we go past about, I don't know, 30 percent or so of the signal, we start to get an uneven amplitude across the spectrum. But just up to that point, we'll notice that we, we have kind of a sawtooth-like um, spectrum beginning. Let me do it again. Even up to that point, at about 48%, we see we've got a, all of our harmonics are present, and they're descending pretty linearly, including one subharmonic, which is uh, something that'll turn up in FM. So this is one way of getting towards a sawtooth-like sound. And what we want to make note of is that if the carrier frequency is the same frequency as the modulator, then increasing the amount of modulation will simply give you more harmonics in a, a linear arrangement like this, very sawtooth-like. Um, as soon as I change the ratio over here, so a one-to-one -one ratio right now would mean that if this guy's at 500 hertz, this guy's at 500 hertz, so the modulator and carrier are the same frequency. Changing the ratio, ratio just changes the mul multiplier of uh, one against the other, and that's something we'll get into a little bit later on. There's another way of introducing more harmonics to an individual carrier, and for this I can even turn off E, although it's not active at this point. And again, you turn on and off uh, a, a operator uh, in FM8 by right-clicking or on the Mac control clicking on it. Notice that 
Along with our gray boxes here, above each of the operators we have another gray box that kind of looks a little bit out of place from these nice rows. And <coughs> excuse me, what that means is it gives us the opportunity to feed back into itself. So it takes the output of the F oscillator and it feeds it back into itself, which is also going to introduce a lot of harmonics. So let's see what this sounds like. Now arguably even more sawtooth-like, we look at the result up here and again we've got every harmonic plus a little bit of a subharmonic, a little bit of uh, grit adding uh, adding into the, the, uh, the lower amplitude range here. So simpler than using the two oscillators, the two separate operators, we're just simply feeding back one on the other. So the two mental notes you're looking for here is when we're dealing with one feeding uh, one operator feeding another at the same ratio, one to one ratio here at the same frequency, we're going to get a buildup of each harmonic uh, in a row. And the same is going to be true when we introduce feedback onto one of the operators as we did just here.